Welcome to the Teaching Science Podcast. These episodes are recorded on Mondays at 4 p.m. Eastern in our virtual Teacher's Lounge. If you would like to join us on a Monday to chat about a topic related to science education, go to the calendar in our show description to get the link for the week. You can listen to the recorded discussions as a podcast from any major podcast provider or on the Superheroes of Science YouTube channel. Speaking of learning new things, we are on the brink of a brand new school year. Yes. Well, a lot of teachers have started already, and some are, well, I think better, but I started, most teachers have started. Yeah. Now, so it's where they're all starting off that school year, aren't they? Mm -hmm. And uh, today, I guess we want to, in our ramblings, mm -hmm. talk about, uh, I, I, I want to say, I don't know if you want to say first lab or just first activity. I think even just. You know, because this first lab or first activity, whatever you say, that's really going to set the tone in general for what your class is going to be. It, it is. It is. Um, it, in a, I mean, you always start off with, I'm thinking, okay, it's the, even uh, pretty much all grades, we start off with like class rules. Yeah. And then from there, we go into whatever content. Mm -hmm. and so what, if I understand what you're saying correctly, mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to say then would be start instead of starting off with content, or well, whether you intertwine the content into or not, but just do some sort of activity. Right. Whether it's a full lab or just an activity to get their, I want to say, uh, to get excited about. Well, yeah, labs maybe get their classes. wheels turning and their minds yeah. thinking and their hands moving i mean they, they they're for goodness sakes they're probably well I, I guess i'm thinking middle and high school students they're probably mm -hmm. sitting through anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour's yes. worth of on a, rules and handbook and procedures and this which is all very important but they need a they need to some get some sort of break in there and mm -hmm. to be able to do the break from that type of thing to be able to do something mm -hmm. and for the elementary i mean we got to get that routine in we really don't have a choice yeah uh, because that's that's most classroom management styles for the elementary is running that learning that routine. To begin with. Sure. Uh, more than rules, it's just the routine of the day, and uh, students, uh, just like old people, need uh, need routine. They need to understand routine. Mm -hmm. And so, but it would be really nice to be able to throw in. And uh, I know a lot of times where science is only done like once a week or something. If it's done. And, but it'd be nice to, to throw in and, and be able to, okay, hey, we're going to do activity. This is, I mean, it's, I did like long-term science stuff and a lot of my things, I do units every Friday. Mm -hmm. I do a science unit and this is where I would throw in my first activity. Uh, it'd be the first full week of school that Friday. That's where I think I would want to do my activity. Okay. Maybe each Friday afternoon is kind of a special thing, and, and my schedule was always different on Friday afternoons. Mm -hmm. But because the Power School Improvement Plan was doing an extra math lesson, and oh. mine was always math through science. Okay. And so that's where I did all my big and long units. And so we were doing all this extra as math, but it was all science through right. science for them understanding and learning. And so that's where I would do my first activity. First full week of school that Friday afternoon is where I would do it for the elementary. Yeah. And, um, for middle and high school, mm -hmm. which is more your area, I don't know how soon would you throw that in. Well, I know where it depends on what hour and what day it is that you're saying. I know the very first day, a lot of times there's different classes have meetings, um, and that probably depends. I know we had a smaller school, so they'd have all the yeah. kids, you know, okay, now all the seventh graders, now all the eighth graders. I know in the mm -hmm. mornings it would be, um, you know, you're, it used to be you're going to read this many pages of the handbook. And then it was, okay, now we're all, but now I think the handbook's all online. So I'm not even mm -hmm. sure that's a thing anymore. But at some point you're covering rules and, and you want to make sure that they have that lab, you know, lab safety is very important, especially at the middle and high school, especially if they're going to be doing anything with wet chemicals or any kind of apparatus or something that they need. And of course, they're always wearing safety glasses, hopefully. So yes. we have this, but um, they, that, that does need covered. But why not model this through an activity, you know, through have mm -hmm. them do this first, get them up, get them moving, make it a little different, make it something that they're going to want to come back to. There's, you know, something yes. that's going to make that class feel really short. Oh, the time's already out. Oh, I want to come back. That, that kind of gets them engaged and gets them thinking. 
And, and we've got some ideas on these. Well, I don't know if I zoned out or you didn't answer the question though. So when do you turn it, when do you start it? Oh, it just sort of depends on what our administration does. But for me, it was, okay, we get through that first, you know, whatever we're supposed to cover in that first day. And I want to jump right to it that first day. So I have the kids, you know, we go kind of go over and they have something they've got to sign and then take home and have their parents look at it and then bring it back. But then we, we kind of just jump right into it. And we okay. always would have a couple of activities that were my kind of go-tos at the beginning of mm. the year. So I don't know. So, and that's, that, I mean, that's why I'm asking you. Yeah. Middle and high school was years where elementary was, I was a little more solid in and I mean, I know how to start an elementary year, uh -huh. I mean, it's, but we, we, routine is so important. Yeah. It's just unrealistic to be able to just throw elementary kids into an activity, in my opinion. And, mm -hmm. and maybe it's my learning style, my teaching style, uh, a little bit both, but it might be my teaching style where I, I want that routine set and make sure we understand our routine where things go. Yeah. And so it, it's, I'm sure some teachers are a lot more, uh, maybe have a little more leniency than we did mm -hmm. with that but I know we didn't have a lot of leniency and I know it's like my wife uh, she's had administrators who will literally come around and if you're not teaching uh, a certain literacy thing at a certain time it's you're blocked and I mean you're in trouble oh you can easily get written up and this wow. is like not ancient history by any means oh my goodness we'll just say that yeah and so it's yeah she, her schedule is the the administrators have a schedule, and that's when you're supposed to be teaching everything. Okay. Very controlled. Yes. Very controlled. They've taken most of the teaching, the art of teaching, out of teaching. And the word is, word is drones, in my opinion, half the time. Wow. But I'm deviating a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that's, I don't want to get on the negative side of that. But I, I just think a lot of administrators don't let us actually uh, do our art. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm an artist of teaching. Yeah. And I feel a lot of times it's very stifled yeah. and it's harder. So, but even without them, I would still kind of want to build it in to figure out where it fits in my schedule. Absolutely. Which like I said, the yeah. schedule I had would be every Friday afternoon. Okay. But so first activities that we talk about, mm -hmm. um, I would say upper elementary all the way through high school, mm -hmm. uh, density is a very important concept. Oh, absolutely. Density. I don't think there is, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a topic that would be so great to begin with mm -hmm. that would then touch on just about everything that you're going to be teaching throughout that science class the rest of the year. I mean, density really yes. has a lot of application and to just about everything. We teach foundations of this in the younger grades with sink and float. Okay. And so, I mean, that that's a foundation of density. Mm -hmm. I understand why things sink. I realize buoyancy is in play and stuff there. Yeah. But once they start understanding some of this, we can move on and start building in. So even the younger grades, I think, could participate in a density, mm -hmm. an early density activity. And they would just do it more under a sink and flow idea, mm -hmm. right? Understand, having them understand the difference. And so I get, I get, I get a little messy there. But so it was a little risk yeah. there with kindergarten. I mean, the first week of school, I don't know if my wife would. Uh, she's not on today. I'd be curious to ask her. If first week, would you do that? And I think she'd laugh at me. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but maybe. I mean, it would depend. It would sort of depend. You know, would you have the... Well, um, I know this year she has, like, at least the third of class, she doesn't understand what they're saying yet. Oh, okay. And so she has a lot of uh, ELL It'll, students, yeah, yeah. and she has students that, I mean, haven't been identified yet for okay. their, like, uh, different needs. Sure. I'll say that. Yeah. And um, so it's, uh, with her, it's, they, uh, that would be extra complexities. Absolutely. So for <laughs> a teacher of that audience, yes. uh, God bless you. Um, none of you are right in the head very long. But uh, if you were in the first <laughs> place, I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but did say, I was going to say, especially in upper elementary, I was, um, it's, it, that's on the money. Mm -hmm. uh, I love the density straws activity. Yes. Just use the salt water cups and straws and that's it. Um, well, of course, sponges and cleanup stuff, you know. But for activity wise, it's just salt. It, that is so easy. We'll put a link in the description yep. um, about one because we did that for a middle school workshop. We did. Uh, we have a video included as well. Yeah, with that's our, what I meant, yeah. the video mm -hmm. part. Uh, we'll, we'll do the video of that to walk you through how to do that. Yes. And that's very adaptable. You did a little bit differently when you taught high school. I did. Well, I didn't know about density straws. I somehow missed this and I did um, the same idea. So we still okay. had the colors. Um, except the students knew ahead of time what the um, the sugar percentages were. I use sugar and water. Uh, I love salt and water. That makes so much more sense. Yeah, I just I, never I, sugar would be thought a, about it. Um, sugar was 
fun, but uh, very sticky. But it, <laughs> but anyway, this the kids would uh, we had about eight colors. Where I know density straws, who had um, four. about four colors. Yeah, so four. We, I have done a, a fifth. I've done like clear uh -huh. before for students that were just like really fast. Yeah, like getting stuff done. I'll give them one that's in between okay. densities and they just figure out where it goes. I, oh. I misspoke too. I think I said eight. I meant six. I didn't have it. Well, eight. Well, <laughs> either one, that's a ton. Yeah. Six, <laughs> yeah. But it was fun. And it was who can make the liquid rainbow. And of course, they they are amazed in the first place that you can stack liquids. So that's a fun thing yeah. that they would, you know, try and try and try. And it's kind of technique and they knew, but then they had to decide are they going from the 0% sugar to 60 or 60% to zero. All right. All right so wait a minute. Wait. You called it the liquid rainbow. Yeah. All right. So yeah. it's the, I got to, it might be deviating a little bit. I got to uh -huh. tell you, because the density straws I, I taught for, I've taught this for 20 years, uh -huh. now, this activity. And I was guest teaching in middle school. Yeah. And I was doing density straws. And I'm explaining, trying to get the idea of density behind it to understand. All right, so what's different about these that causes them to, you know, sink down in the other way. Right. You know, it, so it makes it heavier for its size. And talk about all this stuff and where I it, figured out it's salt. Then I had a young lady who, I, it's terrible to say, but it's stereotypical cheerleader uh <laughs> girl and it's you think of a cheerleader boom she pops in your head and she's like oh my god you mean there's salt in the rainbows oh it, it's like it, <laughs> most of the class just started laughing i just like look at her then she, i think she realizes that what, what she said was uh, you Silly. know yeah yeah <laughs> and uh but uh, i'm just like no yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, they, now I, i'll say no. so do you have you do you lead kids to think that it's caused by sugar? Well, <laughs> no, I'm very open with all that. They have all this information. They know, hey, the red one's a 0% sugar. And ah. the, the orange one's a 10% sugar. See, my density straws, they don't know anything right. until the end. Which I love. I, I never. I, it's very inquiry. Very, you have to, you know, I don't even know what these liquids are. Yeah. You know, yeah, I tell and this I love just it. stuff. And I was like, stuff oh, no, out. this is water and sugar and food color. Like the kids knew all this. Of course, okay. I had sophomores. And they're, you know, they're still at the point where, you know, can we drink it? No, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, I love, I, and I just never thought of making it like how density, yeah. the density straws thing is where we don't know. And we don't know necessarily that the colors are going to stack. And I definitely would do it that way now okay. that I've seen that. But yeah, I had one of my teachers, uh, uh, once again, deviating with stories, but I had one of my teachers who came ish, I mean, she's like sending me messages. It's like, oh my gosh, dude, you won't believe this. And uh, it's that she had done the density straws yeah. lessons. I mean, just like I model it. And but being especially high school, right? Um, so they were high school classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, they you don't drink anything in high school Absolutely classroom, not. right? Yeah. And yeah. so they they taught it in whichever high school. I don't even remember. It's been years ago. I don't remember what class it was. And uh, they told the kids, you're not allowed to do not. Drink, drink this. Make sure it's not it. getting in. Right. It's absolutely important you don't. She had one kid who was like a very known stinker. Uh -huh. And he's like, well, I did. And she's like, oh, my God. I, I hope you're going to be okay. And then the <laughs> teacher walks away. <laughs> and so throughout the day, this, the kid started getting worried about it, getting mm -hmm. himself more and more sick. Right. Which is kind of funny <laughs> until that evening when the administrator calls the teacher oh, no. asking what chemicals did you use in class today? Because one of your students is in the emergency room uh -oh. and he's ingested chemicals. Okay. And so <laughs> to find out it was salt, I'm oh. sure he was in trouble, but yeah, it got less funny once the yeah. emergency room was involved because he made himself so sick worrying about it. Now to be fair, salt water is going to make your tummy hurt a little. I mean, that is good. No more than he drank it shouldn't. <laughs> Oh, but my so word. yeah, uh, which I think is just hilarious. Um, okay. that, if I was my kid, I'd kill him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I totally wish that would have happened to someone. <laughs> okay, moving uh, on. Yes, yeah, move on. All right, some of the other things, especially with the younger ones I've done, is the paper helicopters. Yes. Well, I mean, so we even go. years ago when I first came to Purdue, mm -hmm. and so years ago, uh, <laughs> we, I, I worked with, I had an art teacher. I explained, I'm like, hey, we, we, and we asked, I asked a bunch of teachers who I was teaching with. It was yeah. like, I was doing, that's when I was writing the lessons for Purdue before I was full-time employed. Okay. And uh, I'm like, hey, these superhero names, you know, and uh, 
I can't remember what they all whirlwind Willie, Dynamic Debbie. They're oh, Dynamic Debbie's the best. So the art teacher drew it, you know, and I I messed with shapes of these helicopters. He drew it. And we had for years. We did that. I think someone eventually changed my thing to Pinwell Pete to go with oh, Purdue Pete. Okay. But uh, <laughs> and so, but we did these helicopters, and they we gave them a generic helicopter shape. They would cut out mm -hmm. and try to spin. And the whole idea, of, I, I, mean, I love doing stories with everything. Mm -hmm. You know, Diane McDevitt has lost her super spin. This isn't very super, you know, and you just drop it and it kind of would not spin right. uh, because it needed paper clips. And we use yeah. paper clips, it needs some kind of weight to hold it down. And so they got to look at the model and then determine a test to, that would allow that to have a super spin. Okay. And then with the that early grades, it's all, I mean, main spin was like, a, or, you know, a tremendous event in life. Right. right. There. Then as we started going up in the grades, we had to define what is a super spin. Oh, my. Is it the most, so for middle school, we were talking most turns per minute or the fastest down. And so at most turns per, you know, uh, for, for uh, yeah. yeah, length. And so we had classroom discussions on what is the super spin and what are we really trying to get? Wow. And so we're discussing variables, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I love that one. And I've seen uh, other teachers, I didn't do any paper planes in the classroom myself. Um, uh, simply because, well, uh, when when I was a kid, one of the church kids, the church lost an eye because we had paper plane fights. Oh no! I was not present when it happened. wasn't my fault. Um, a, a child lost an eye. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. I did paper airplanes, and I probably wouldn't have <laughs> had I known a kid actually lost an eye. That's really scary. But I love the paper airplane challenge. This kid, we were talking earlier. This could be a really fun team challenge. We both yeah. love um, the following exact instructions challenge. So this is imagine yes. um, you've probably seen this before. Sometimes you'll see it with write out exactly the instructions how to build a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, for example. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. Of and then you <laughs> then you follow exactly, and I'll say Stephen is the best. At Follow instructions. following instructions, it's interpret hilarious. them in ways you did not mean. Yes, so I've done this, and I know a couple of years ago when we were still going into classrooms, um, I went to a fourth grade class, and we didn't do peanut butter and jelly because we didn't necessarily want to do food, but we did putting on a coat, uh, and that was a lot of fun. And the kids were really frustrated because I was following exactly how to put on the coat based on how they were telling me. But what about putting kids into teams? Getting back to the paper airplanes. And having one kid give instructions for the rest of the team for building the paper yes. airplane. And they have to follow exactly what that kid says, not interpret how the instructions are, but exactly what they say. And then the team that builds the airplane that flies the farthest. I mean, this is a good team building. Oh, yes. And I love the I love the team building challenges. I know we we put in a reading dividers yeah. around. Everybody has a, you know, the paper dividers around your area. So no one else can see it back the old. SRA stuff, but um, it, is it SRA it's reading assessment? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, whew, <laughs> uh, show my age, but uh, the not that I know anything about those things, I've just heard of them. Uh, but <laughs> I'm not old enough to know, but uh, we have put those folders uh -huh. around uh, each student, and then uh, they would have to explain to the others how to build things, whether it's Legos or it's a drawing, mm -hmm. or it's so, and then we've also had where each of the teams had a different part of a picture. Okay. And they had to explain the picture in each in turn. Then one person had to draw out the entire picture. Oh my goodness. And, and so yeah, it's, that, and, that'd be it's a good a one simple too. drawings, but mm -hmm. yet you had to figure out a draw based on each of the people explaining. And we did a, um, a coding activity a couple of years ago with something like that, where we had the, the divider and mm -hmm. then we had one person on the team and the, and the child had a grid and then their teammate um, or maybe we had a couple of them had to give instructions on how to work through the grid, but it was actually a maze. And yeah. so then we would, um, in, you know, superimpose the two together and see, did they make it through the maze? And we've done that at museum things. My students mm -hmm. have done that as a human robot. Okay. And so yeah. Yeah, you, one person's reading instruction has to tell the other, but they can't see where they, they are. See how they, yeah. yeah. Actually going through a maze that we've done on the floor. Yeah. And so, and that's a huge kick. Yeah. So following exact instructions, this is kind of fun. Yes. We have a link to a design challenge. Um, we've done this in the past. For, yeah, when them. we were teaching engineering design a lot, uh, we wrote up some mm -hmm. design challenges and gave different groups uh, different instructions. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one was like building an anemometer and um, one was a, 
Oh, I don't know. We, we it's have been to too many years since yeah. we <laughs> One's too many. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's so give them a design challenge and have you could give the class one and have all of them. You give a list and have each group pick from the list. Right. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, when we do engineering design, you can be have competitive ones too, where everyone's doing it. And then everyone votes on which design they like the best. You could do it that right. way if you wanted, any way you want, anything to, to get them moving, to get them thinking. Mm -hmm. And so and our, that's what I love so far about all of these. It's they're all encouraging that, the, that thinking. It's getting them up. It's getting them, giving them a challenge or something to do. And they're all thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Now, years and years ago, I remember seeing the uh, food coloring uh, in milk. Yes. Uh, with uh, Dawn, then we used Dawn dish soap and we dripped it down mm -hmm. I mean, many years ago. And I know that when I mentioned to you earlier today, you said uh, American Chemical Society has rainbow milk. They have that lesson written up. They do. There's a lot of sites that have it. I, yeah. I like going with American Chemical Society for one thing. It's free, but they also have some spinoffs of different things you can do. Now, their lesson is going to show with um, whole milk. But yeah. then I like that they're also showing in that, you know, what if you try different types of That's milk? That's what well. we used to do. We started off with a certain type of milk, usually whole yeah. milk, and then we had discussions of what would others be and, and be able to design experiments and stuff. Yeah, it was pretty fun. And, and to have the kids then thinking about, you know, really, then that leads in nicely into mixtures and, and composition of things, um, homogenous versus heterogeneous solutions and, and what those are because with the milk mm -hmm. and then thinking about those particles in it. So I, I like that. I just like that it makes the pretty colors move. It is. It's very so, pretty. I think, oh, I think another, you can also try kaleidoscope. They do it with milk. glue. Oh, it would do, you yeah. You can put glue in it. Okay. And let it dry out. And then you can hang it up. Oh, my gosh. That's cool. I have not personally done it. Yeah. But I saw, I don't know if it was an article someone wrote or someone's lesson plan. I remember years ago seeing that, though. They yeah. actually put glue in it. And I don't know if they put it before or after, but that'd be something curious to figure out. They that actually hung them up as window oh, or things means. afterwards. Yeah. After drive. I don't know how that works. If you try it and it creates mold and everyone in your classroom dies. <laughs> well, I hope not. I claim no, this is my personal disclaimer. <laughs> don't blame me. I told you I didn't know what would happen. <laughs> it is not my fault. Um, next thing. Earthquake engineering. Uh, earthquake engineering. We can put a link to that one too. That's another activity we've been doing for years. Mm -hmm. And it's just another engineering challenge when it's how to make a building. I remember doing this with like the fourth graders when I taught, you know, how we had, we made buildings to withstand an earthquake. Nice. And so, and I have done this with everything from kindergarten through high school. Mm -hmm. It's just materials and rules are different. Mm -hmm. You know, with kindergartners, we literally use paper cups and styrofoam cups and, and plates, paper plates and stuff. And so each group got so like, you know, five yeah. cups, three plates, whatever. Oh, it's the highest, you build the highest you can that's going to withstand the shade. Okay. And we did it very simply. We, we would, uh, uh, we would just do where they did it on a tray. Uh -huh. And in which, and when I did it with young kids, it was literally tubs of lids that had been broken. But uh, then it's, that's what's right here. We, found a bunch of trays that we acquired cafeteria trays right yes yeah. yes or well maybe maybe they they're are. not cafeteria <laughs> they were <laughs> um <laughs> anyway but uh I did not take them personally i just took them from the closet there we found them. um <laughs> but anyway move right along we've had built them on trays and they bring the tray up and what i did in the classroom is i actually marked off tape okay and so if it, it'll go i, I had you know, a set like in one second, okay. if I can go there and back in a second, you know, and it's only like a foot and a half, then the next one is like two feet, you know, and so oh, wow. still that one second time. Yeah. So it's a lot more violent at that point. Yeah. So he's actually showing moving this tray and I'm in the lab and not moving so over. Yeah. <laughs> Point out the fact I'm not doing it. But then uh, the accelerometers came out. Yeah. And so now we use a single axis accelerometer. We just tape it right to yeah. car creeper is what I used when I started doing that that way. Yeah. And uh, so we can actually get data up and show, visualize that, hook that up to the teacher's computer, and then everyone can see. Then who's withstand the most G's? Right. Acceleration. So that, that's a fun, once again, that's just another engineering design. It's really good. I think this time of year, engineering design is a way to get them to start thinking. Yeah. The cup, cup flat platform. Uh, we've done that with younger kids before. I've never done it with older. And that's where we took like paper cups or mm -hmm. styrofoam cups and, and like used like cardboard or something. Okay. And it, they got 
so many and you had to build a base platform that would uh the teacher could stand on oh and so i mean you tr you, you pay a 200 pound dude like me and try to stand on a cup it's going to crush right but if you distribute that weight oh. over enough cups nice it, it's doable holy cow and so you yeah. just gotta be nice and step gently but I was gonna uh, say, like, well, if you don't want to do this teaching you'd have control so a you pick a student who okay. is our who is our tester you know student you could always do that right and uh, can I was, designate a student yes. that I want? <laughs> yeah, I want. I'm not sure where you're going with that, but yeah, moving right on. Yeah, let's talk about one that you like. You I, talked about this before. I did. So this next one, you just can't do it back to back years. Really, probably even back to back to back years. But we've got a couple of options here. Maybe spread it out a little. The DHMO Research Project. Now, I'm also putting a link to this, and also the post discussion with the grading rubric as well. Um, I did this a couple of different times, but again, you had to spread it out because of course the kids, once they hear anything fun or exciting or controversial, everybody in the school knows about it, especially at a small school. So the DHMO, they go to www.dhmo.org. And the idea is that there, this is a research activity. We want to uncover yeah. this, this is a, this conspiracy. It's in everything. Uh, and and I <laughs> just kind of, you know, fact checking this, you know, is this true? And it's just this whole principle around dihydrogen monoxide that it's just found everywhere. It's, um, you know, if you inhale it, it can, it will kill you. And um, of course. Yeah. We... <laughs> yeah. Now I remember a, I remember this, I don't know, well, there wasn't a website for it back then. Okay. But when I was actually doing my undergrad. Uh-huh. And I, I remember hearing some teachers talking about doing this as a project, and mm -hmm. I thought it was the funniest thing ever. Oh my gosh! It's... And then I, I came in actually to the chemistry of this building. Yeah, you know, we're in the chemistry department. Yeah. And I was telling one of the people there, who of course was getting his PhD in chemistry, okay. and he's like, "Well, they need to learn how to paint or how to." Yeah, he he was not impressed. Okay. Um, <laughs> Which is funnier? I think. Yeah, he was not impressed. <laughs> they didn't learn how to run paint things properly. He was not impressed. We were talking about water. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> but it's hilarious. And the kids, if they know, you'll have a couple of real smarty pants, especially the older, the older grades you get that'll know, but you just kind of, you know, shake your head. No, just let it go. And it's fun. It's fun to watch them build this up, but, um, that, you know, it's, water is a hazard, <laughs> but when they do it, know, is, sure. Yeah, it's had sure. so many different, you know, bad things. Uh -huh. It's a fire retardant. Oh, yeah. um, it's, it's used to suppress, I mean, it's just, you know, all kinds of. Um, now, let's say that you, you love the DHMO research activity and you want to do something similar the next year. We have the sewer lice lesson. Uh, I've not heard of this. Now, nobody wants lice around, right? But sewer lice, um, you, you, this, you can bring into um, the topic of, you know, what, what traits do living things versus non-living things have? So for example, and uh, we had, I've seen it where the teachers will take some cola or some coffee, and then they'll do a mixture of maybe like a cola and like a lemon lime drink as well. And then maybe just all lemon lime drink. So they'll have three containers, preferably that you can see through. And then they'll put some um, raisins that have been maybe soaked. I think I can't remember if you soak it in the soda or you soak it in the water for a while. Give it some time to soak because then they... Um, you know, they get kind of waterlogged or whatever, yeah. but then they make some observations of those and that you could say, um, you know, okay, do you know that this is a type of lice that feeds on sewage and that over time, so then you can show them the first one, you know, this, this was just collected. The one maybe that's the intermediate with the cola and the lemon lime is a little lighter in color. So those sewer lice have been feeding longer. Uh -huh. And then the lightest ones, you know, okay, these have really cleaned up the environment. Would anyone like to taste one? Of course, that's ridiculous. Who would ever eat a, a, a lice or a louse? I don't know what the, the, the singular is for that or drink the liquid. But, um, you know, this is just I think it would just gross everybody out. But it sounds awesome. But that the idea is that you're taking these traits. So we've had a couple of links to people that have done this. Now, I couldn't find a lesson plan that was free necessarily, but I found a couple of links where people have described this and some some different lessons that they got out of it. Um, and I think you have enough there to put together a, a lesson. All right, we're pressed for time. Yes. But one of them I wanted to go into uh -huh. because I was impressed, and that's where I thought you were going with this one. I, I didn't think you were going with the uh, the dihydrate or what? Um, dihydrate dihydrate monoxide. Uh -huh. I didn't think you were going with that one. Yeah, I thought you were doing the other. Okay. Uh, because you, it, it's, 
I had not thought of doing it with, with students. I'm like, hey, have you seen the, the multiple intelligence inventory thing? You're like, uh, yeah, I did that every year with my students. Yeah, yeah. Which I thought, okay, smarty pants. <laughs> uh, but so I, I like the idea of doing that. So I found the one that I used and they've, they've made some improvements to it, but the students go through and answer. It's a series, I don't know, it's like 10 or so questions. Um, I'm like ten, nine sets of 10 questions, I think. But they're all simple. And it's just, if, if, if this applies to you, you, get a, you give it a one. <laughs> And then you go through all the questions. I like doing that on um, like the first day, really. If once we've been through everything, we have a few minutes left. The kids like answering these types of questions about themselves. And then they're going to go through and, and it gives them a little practice with doing some data analysis as well. But they go through and they add up their scores for each one. And then they have them. There's a little bit of graphing that they can do with this. But then they see where they fall on the multiple intelligences um, I think there's like a chart that they have for this. And I really like that it um, emphasizes that nobody is just one type of intelligence and that you can work on improving like how you learn in different ways. So you can see where your really strong intelligence is. Maybe it's that bodily kinesthetic or maybe it's a musical intelligence. I always liked that that, that was an option on it, um, but that you can see where you're strongest in and then maybe areas where you need to, to work, um, do a little, little more work on. And I, I like that idea. I like that. I think the high schools would be an awesome place for students to start thinking about that. Yes. I think that yeah. would help them. Well, all right. Well, these are just some ideas that we quickly brainstormed and threw out of ways of starting. And we encourage everyone to get as hands on and active as possible. As soon as, as possible. As early yeah. as possible. Mm -hmm. It fits within your schedule. And uh, don't wait. It, it, I hear teachers say, oh, yeah, it's. Almost in the first semester, we haven't done that labs yet. We haven't got hands on yet. And I, I cringe when I think that. I said, "Oh, you know," because it's. I understand it's. We get afraid to it, nervous about things sometimes, but it, it's. It, it is a lot of prep, and I think that's a that's a tough is. thing as it's, well. It, it's, yeah. I'm not arguing that it's. It can be a lot of work. Different ones are more yeah. than others, but get down thinking. Get down hands on, active, active moving. And uh, it's, I think once we set that precedent, I know you were really big about making high expectations for yes. students in your classroom. Yep. And uh, as we find out, students and people, uh, they tend to live up to your expectations no matter how low they are. <laughs> and so uh, don't see if you expect really low things from them. That's what you're going to get, get right. <laughs> and so uh, that, that's, uh, I guess, on a closing note. Yeah. Uh, expect great things of them and uh, get them up and moving. There's just really never, I've never seen a class where, they couldn't handle doing these on these active hands-on activities. Um, maybe they need some encouragement, but the, I think the sooner that you get them working on these, the, the more they learn. That, I think once it's part of the routine, yeah. they, they, they do respect stuff a little bit better. Yep. With that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us in our virtual lounge. Please like, download, and subscribe, and share the love. Oh, I was going to say share the love. <laughs> Find us on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, Twitter. YouTube. And follow us everywhere. Just not in a creeper way. <laughs>